Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 27. Ah, wow. April is almost over, isn't it? Uh, of the April Eco Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Smallest string with swaps. So you give an S and an array of pair indexes and a pair sub I, A, B. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, so you can swap any pair of indices in a given pair any number of times. Okay, return the lexicographically smallest string S that can be changed after using the swaps. Okay. So basically, this is, um, hmm. I think for me, um, um, what am I trying to say? So I know the answer to this one. Uh, be, I think for me, I'm trying to try to figure out how to explain it. I think the, one thing that we, you know, uh, if you watched a lot of videos that I've I've get put out, uh, and oops, one button, uh, and you know, when we do contests and stuff like this, you have this idea. Sometimes they 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 there is a set of problems that be like, oh, you can do these steps infinite number of times, right? And this is one of those problems. Um, and in those cases. Sometimes you'll see me jump directly to, directly to sorting or something like that because we can, you know, because if you do something an infinite number of times, then you could do some sort of greedy. And in this case, there it is no difference, right? It is that if you can do it any number of times, you will just do things in the greediest way. And here, um, it's kind of, there is this idea of uh, this greedy, right? Is that, and you can kind of work backwards or forwards depending on how you think about it. Is that, okay, let's say you have this pair, this is this thing, so I'm gonna skip that one. But let's say here, right? So that means that if a character's on three, you can move it to zero, zero, you can move it to two, two, you can move it to one, meaning that they're all connected almost. So that any character, if you're given enough moves, you can move it to anywhere else in this particular example, right? So there's examples like that. And then, and then the idea is that, okay, now for every ca um, character, what is the biggest or the smallest right, uh, character that we can move to, right? This is lexicographic, greedy type thing, right? Because uh, in, a, in a sorting order, in a lexo order, um, if you have a smaller character in the beginning, it, does, it doesn't matter what the rest of them are, right? Like, what, and what I mean by that is if you have A and it could be, the rest could be Zs, and it is smaller than B A A A A, right? So that means that you always want to optimize for the first or the earlier in the position. Um, and so, all that being said, what this, um, you know, uh, uh, if you want to build out um, the swap map, if you will, of like A and B, and then because we can do this infinite amount of time, um, if you can A, if you if if you could swap A and B, and you could swap B and C, you could swap A and C, right? So, uh, so obviously there's a transitive property here, and therefore you you can just try to figure out some kind of transitive closure. And even more than transitive is that um, it's not just about A and C. Is that everything between A, B, and C, they are in the same equivalence class. And what I mean by that is that you get any of those things that are in the uh, A, B, and C in this case um, can swap for each other, right? You could also prove that a little bit, at least in the context of this problem, from the um, from the transitive property and the transitive closure. Um, obviously, you can you can calculate the transitive closure, but there's an uh, and you know you could do that in n cube times, which is probably too slow. Yep, um, but there. Are, um, but once you figure out that is the equivalent class, the next thing that should come into your mind, or at least for me anyway, so maybe I'm a little bit more mathematical that way though. So, uh, uh, but yeah, the next thing that comes to my mind anyway is union find, because now you have these equivalent sets and inside that you're trying to greedily sort those characters, say. So that's basically the idea. Um, okay. So let's get started with finding all the, the things. Um, again, eh, I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, one thing that I would say about me and contest is that maybe I should have a, uh, 
a DSGO, a union file li library. I, if you watch me on contest and even on here, I type it out almost every time. So um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, but that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I generally usually do. Uh, I'm not going to go over this the union final uh, uh, part that much because we already kind of ha had... Um, uh, we already kind of did some parts of it yesterday. Um, though, if there is something that, if I see something that changes, I will point it out, but yeah, I don't know. But I, I don't, I'm not going to like, you know, go through the basics of Union Fine every time. Oops, almost typed it wrong. And that's the other thing about write, rewriting it every time is that sometimes you can easily type things wrong. So yeah, so now pairs for... Uh, do, 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 right? And that's pretty much the idea is that you union all these things. And then now we just have to group them together, I suppose, right? Um, yeah, I mean, there are a couple of ways you can implement this. I'm just thinking about the cleanest way. I'm just going to do a mapping. So, yeah. So let's just say, you know, classes is, uh, classes in the sense of equivalent classes, um, even though that's an awkward term in programming, I guess, but, but that's what I'm just sticking with. Uh, yeah, let's go to, let's just say, let's just say list for now. Huh. That means that one of my triggers happened, which is happy because made money. Uh, okay. <laughs> and if you recognize that chime, let me know in the comments. But, uh, okay, now I forgot what I was, I was got a little distracted. Okay, for I in, in range of N, um, so then now we do, do a unit fine, uh, let's just say root, and then classes of root dot append as sub I, right? That's basically what we're doing. Basically, we're, we're putting all the classes that are together, we put the strings together, and then, yeah. And then at the way n for do, 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 do. It, this is kind of messy actually to be honest, but for each one we uh, we sort because everything in the same class we want to do greedy and basically yeah greedy within that equivalence class. So basically we sort it to have the earliest character first, and of course if if there are two different groups of strings, no matter how they interleave, um, you know, they, they interact independently, right? Because you, in a greedy way, you want the earliest to the early, so yeah. Uh, okay, so then now we just have to reconstruct. Um, let's see. Mm, how, do, how do I want to write it? Maybe I want to do something like this. Um, I want to sort it, but then I want to convert it to a deck just because I'm lazy. You could also have, um, you can also, let me run this real quick. I don't know if that violates some preconditions, but yeah, you can also run, um, you know, you, okay. Uh, you can also, what I was going to, you can also keep track of the, the index used. And I think that's like the cleaner way, to be honest, in terms of like memory usage and stuff like that and overhead. But, uh, but I'm going to write it this way so that it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so you find this to get the root again. And then here we want to pop left to get the first character of that one. So and then we repent it to answer. And then at the end, we just return this. I think that should be good. I mean, that idea should be good. We'll see if this is works. This looks okay. Let me think about edge cases. Um, I mean, I, I know that n is 10 to the fifth, which is big, but we don't really do much other than sorting at most. Um, so I'm not going to go over the complexity here. Um, let's just say this is effectively O of 1. Uh, or again, uh, if, if this is a little bit hand wavy, um, actually, what, what, what did we do yesterday? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go over it really quickly, only because I feel like maybe not everyone's 
like if this is your first Larry video, then uh, and because this is a fun problem that is maybe a little bit, it's a little bit of a hard medium if you don't have all the concepts down. Um, so I do want to explain it in a little bit detail. So okay, but what I was going to say is that most of this is like sorting. So, um, so given that we have n is equal to ten to the fifth, n log n should be good enough. Uh, we'll go over the complexity really quickly. Hmm, I haven't done this problem before. It seems like right. Uh-oh, am I going to get time limit exceeded? Oh, no, I got it wrong, so I'm, I... Hmm, that's sad. Whoops. So it goes to show you, mistakes can happen. Do I have a typo or something? Hmm. Three, zero, one, so two is skip. So one, two. Okay. I mean, it worked for the other one. So what what is wrong here? Um, output, see, okay. No, one is definitely in here. So why did I, hmm, maybe I did something weird. I'm just looking at my union find code. That's 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 why I maybe should have a library so that I don't worry about typos because I have some weirdness here too. But uh, okay, so DKU. So it was not connected to the four. Is that right? What's the input? Three and four. Did I mess something up? Hmm. Dong dong dong. Oh. Huh. That's sad. <laughs> well, if this is your first video watching Larry, you'll know that I am solving this live and there is going to be silly mistakes from time to time. So why is it for not? Hmm, let's see. Okay, so let's do, 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 do print you parents. Hmm, that's awkward though. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, I, in at least in idea, we know how to solve this, and I think I'm happy with that. But a three and three, okay, nothing changes. Three and zero, okay, that's good. Five and one, uh, okay, that's good. Three and one, three and one, so that's good too, I guess. Wait, what? Three and one. This should be the same. I mean, I think I guess they're the same component, but now three and four is awkward. Did I union the wrong thing? Did I misunderstand the problem? No, they both. This is right. So why is Oh, I'm dumb. See, this is why we uh, I this is not the first time I've made this mistake. Um I think I was just talking through it and typing really quickly. Um but yeah, this is why. Uh so uh okay, what a silliness. But yeah, it's I would say this is an example of why you should always have a library and use it. Um, uh, this is also not the first time. It, it doesn't happen that often, to be honest, but this is embarrassing that when it does. So let me give a submit again. Uh, yeah, okay. Whoopsie daisy. 757. Yeah, isn't that like a flight, uh, uh, like an airplane or something? But uh, okay. Uh, okay, so that was a silly mistake. Uh, but also, shows you how easy it is to make mistakes on these and that's why we have libraries in uh, ideally libraries that are tested so that you don't you don't have to worry about these things right um and yeah but the rest of the code was fine so that's why i wasn't thinking about it that much you should get it right i'm now a little disappointed and a little bit sad or maybe a lot sad even um but yeah let's go over the complexity really quickly um so as i said yesterday and i'm not gonna go over it that deeply though um 
you know, they, you can do union by um, by rank, by size, by depth, by like a couple of number of things. Uh, and this will give up different complexities. Uh, I do this thing here, which is a very easy line, and it's called path compression. Also, just union find general. Seems like we'll be doing union find all week, so maybe I'll spend some time at some point to kind of talk about it in detail, but for now, this is it. And the way that I think about union find is about having a rooted tree, um, and then just combining those trees and then compressing the path to those trees uh, as you point upward. Um, and that's basically it here. Um, and it is good at finding the equivalence classes. Um, yeah. Eh, Sag. I think I usually type this first so that I don't forget. But today I typed this part first, which is a little bit weird. Um, and therefore out of order. Uh, I think I was just... Sometimes it happens. Uh, but yeah. Um, in terms of complexity, you'll note that uh, most of it is due to this sorting. So this is going to be n log n. We assume that here, at least for now, uh, you know, you can pretend that this is going to be the reverse Ackerman function uh, or inverse. Reverse? Did I say reverse or inverse? But it's inverse Ackerman function, which is like, like I always said, it's like five or six for the size of the, or the number of atoms in the universe. So I always say it's constant. There are some people that are pedantic about it. So if they ask about it, just, you know, go over the details. Um, and also, yeah. And also, I, I, as I said before, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I, I should have, now that I think about it, I should have done it today. Um, but if we have union find tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, is that I'll do the, the by size. Um, and the thing that I was going to say is that if you have an in interview, definitely do union fight by 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 size or rank, um, because then you can explain it more. I find that for competitive programming or contests and stuff like that, um, and you know you can like this is usually good enough unless people are like challenging your inputs. And if if you worry about that, you can actually even do something really crazy, like if when. It, this is not quite Python, but basically you want to flip a coin to see who who migrates into what, and that should be okay as well. It's probabilistic; it'll be close enough, you, especially if you have path compression. Um, but you just may have a you know an unlucky thing, but that's fine. Um, so I'm going to treat these as O of one. You could say it's O of alpha uh, prime for inverse or something like that. Um, it's fine. Uh, cool. And here, then, in that case, this is all going to be O of 1. This is also going to, well, this is going to be n log n in the worst case, as I said. Um, but the summation is going to be n log n. Um, this is also O of 1 per iteration. So this is going to be O of n. So that means that at the end, it gets dominated by the sorting that's done here. So this is going to be n log n. Time and space is going to be O of n space um, because each character has eh, like a constant number of extra space, like one for the root, one for the, uh, the crazy deck, uh, one for maybe this and so forth. Um, yeah, maybe one more for the answer, but like four or five, right? Um, cool. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Man, man this is embarrassing, <laughs> but it's good in the sense that like, hopefully I get it on my system and if it comes in the contest this weekend or something like that, I'll be like, oh, Larry, you already made this mistake once. Let's not do it again. Uh, but maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll actually like write this out into a library. It is something that is a habit of mine to do it this way, just like write it fresh so that I don't forget. But as you can see, even though I write it fresh, I do forget. So yikes. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for today though. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this problem. The, um, this is a hard medium if you haven't played around with this idea of the equivalence classes and swaps and stuff like that. I. I think even if you have done it before, it could be a little bit tricky, but um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, it's very mathematical with the swappy stuff, so eh. um, anyway, that's all I have though. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye. Have to find the fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>